great. <laughs> Fine artist of Los Angeles. I am glad and I'm happy that you brought me into your gallery or home to uh, show me your artwork and not just me, but everyone that's a part of our Art Talk magazine family. Uh, it's a new uh, YouTube channel that we have and I I've wanted noticed. to feature you in... Uh, I'm very honored. Oh, good. So Thank it's you. It's a great idea. Thank you. And I'm glad to be one of the first artists you yes. are interviewing for yes. your magazine. Great. And uh, so we'll talk today about your life as an artist. And the first question is, tell me what is good art? Good art is complete art to me. It's art that um, the artist has a conceptual vision and completes it. Mm -hmm. to their best ability. Any completed art that is done and uh, presented to the public, there's obviously somebody in the world is going to like it. Mm -hmm. And that's good art. That's good uh -huh. art. I think the artist is the greatest determining factor of how good or how near art is to being good. Mm -hmm. You know what you saw. Right. And you should continue to deal with until it's completed. Mm -hmm. How long have you been doing this? It sounds like forever. It has been almost forever. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> forever minus uh, five years. I started doing art when I was five years old. Mm -hmm. And um, my father would buy me supplies. Mm -hmm. He would bring pencils and paper. He was a teacher. He would bring pencils and paper from school. And I just always did this mm -hmm. and um, I've done other things studied other disciplines but art was always something that it was more of a passion mm -hmm. than a calling okay. it was something that I just it was a natural thing that I did so right out of high school right out of high school um, I went to TSU mm -hmm. which was then called a and I State to be an architectural engineer, oh. and uh, which was related to dra drafting and uh -huh. drawing. Mm -hmm. um, I didn't like that, so I fell back on my other passion for music, and I joined the band. And um, what'd you play? Woodwind. Woodwind. Mm -hmm. Okay. And um, clarinet, saxophone, and flute. Mm -hmm. And that worked for a while. But um, I got fell out of school, dropped out of school, mm -hmm. and joined the army, mm -hmm. and um, enlisted and got was accepted to the army band. Okay. So um, that was a learning experience. After the military, um, I went back to junior college, and I studied art. Okay. And uh, that lasted me for a while till one day I realized that there were some things that I just couldn't do that other people were doing mm -hmm. that I didn't pick up in junior college. Oh. So um, I left Tennessee, migrated to Los Angeles and um, went to the Hollywood Art School. Okay. And they, when I got out of there, it's been nothing that I had really seen or wanted to do that I couldn't do. So I know you're a graphic designer as well, right? Right. Mm -hmm. So yeah. where did you learn graphics? At the Hollywood, Hollywood. Arts Center. Okay. Mm -hmm. okay. Very well-rounded institution uh, from anatomy to graphic arts to mm -hmm. computers. Okay. Uh, they were one of the first schools in the nation to really push computers mm -hmm. uh, in the early 80s. And um, I was lucky and fortunate enough to be there. Yeah, great. Mm -hmm. Great. So who influenced you as an artist? As a what fine artists? artist? Fine artist. Mm -hmm. um, I get my influence from different artists that do different things. I like the passion of Picasso and his business acumen. Uh, Renoir, Degas, with mm -hmm. some of the classical works as far as how they approached their art from an aesthetic point of view, how they use their materials. I like some of the more contemporary artists as far as their subject matter. Mm. Um, 
I think every artist in every period has a point in time that they're at their peak, that they are in tune with their civilization mm -hmm. and what they, they have to give uh, to transcribe from their civilization. Mm -hmm. So um, I don't have one artist more than another, but I kind of pick up things from every, from various artists. And okay. it depends on what I'm trying to do at the point in time. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, art, um, a lot of what we do now as far as commercial art, uh, it's illustrative. It's commercial. Mm -hmm. It's trying to tell a story. Mm -hmm. And that kind of art, you might want to look at one artist over another. But when you want to really tell a message, a message that's going to last a thousand years, then you have to look at other artists that painted a thousand years ago mm -hmm. and see what was it about his message that is still ringing true today whether it's on a ceiling mm -hmm. or on a, on a, on a canvas mm -hmm. so um, it leaves me open to have a variety of influences depending on where I'm going so if you could choose one that was here even though he's dead but mm -hmm. <laughs> if you can go back in time which one would you choose to have a consultation with or collaborate with? Which it, would, um, it would have to be Pablo Picasso. Okay. Um, and why? Because he was so prolific one. Mm -hmm. I mean, he, did, he painted a lot. He painted all the time. And he painted to the point of view that he created a new style, mm -hmm. Cubism. Mm -hmm. You know, um, he created a new style. And he was a great businessman. He was also very politically motivated in some of his work. Mm -hmm. And he broke with the mainstream that was uh, somewhat developed by the Catholic Church. Okay. So I would, I would have to say it, was, it would be Picasso. Picasso. So your first painting, how did you feel? Or when did you complete your first painting and then when you sold it? How did you feel? The first painting, um, I did not sell. Mm -hmm. I think I gave it away. I probably gave it to my mother. I left it in the family home, I know that. The first painting that I sold, it was an exhilarating experience. Mm -hmm. It was a um, painting that I didn't really think would sell. It was not the best of what I felt was my work. It was not my best work, but um, someone came along and they bought it. And I remember the guy, it was a younger guy, it wasn't an older person, it was a younger man bought it. And uh, later, at the same exhibition, I saw him walking through with it. And it was the strangest feeling. <laughs> Somebody was taking it home. Uh. Mm -hmm. And he, he had it in his hands. He mm -hmm. was just, you know, he walked around mm -hmm. and looked at all the other artists and uh, vendors that, that were at the venue. And I saw him when he walked out with it and it was like, wow, I did that. Wow. And I knew I had meant to do that, <laughs> but I hadn't actually done it yet. Yeah. Uh-huh. And it was... Um, it was a good feeling. Yeah. The money was nice, and it was a it was a more of a gratification of the pride that he felt in it. Mm -hmm. That you could do something out of your love for materials and observations of nature. That you could do something that would relate to a person. That they would actually exchange their time and energy in the form of money for it. I was hooked. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> but, but how did you feel? Did because when I sell a painting, it's like, man, it's my child is gone, or something that you you know, you really worked hard for is it done, and it's done, and I know I'm ready to release it, and I have to release it. Mm -hmm. But it just feels like a part of you is leaving. It uh, at a point in time. I've done two different things. Mm -hmm. I have said that um, this particular piece, I will show it, but it's part of the estate. Yeah, okay. You know, it's, I'm going to keep this. Okay. And 
sometimes it's because of the technical quality, sometimes it's because how I feel about it. It's just mine. Mm -hmm. I uh, finished painting a painting or I'm in, ex in an exhibit and my painting is, uh, is there. I know I have to release it. Mm -hmm. But when it's sold, it feels like a part of me is leaving or my child is leaving. Mm -hmm. So how do you feel? Do you, do you it, have that feeling? Uh, I have that feeling. Mm -hmm. And in some situations, I will put on an exhibition of, of paintings or put a painting in an exhibition that I know I'm not going to sell. Okay. Because, and I don't want to sell it. And I'll usually put an exorbitant price on it <laughs> to compensate myself for it. Um, and the, those are paintings that I will keep and I'll say that these are for the estate. Okay. Or I'll say that um, I value that particular painting more than some of the others because of the quality of the execution. Mm -hmm. I got so close, or very close, I just hit it. Sometimes, you know, you just, I saw that and it, it, it came through me, it, yeah. you know. <laughs> yeah. The, the oil, the canvas right. was not the medium. I, the man, was the medium. Right. And when that happens, you create something that's akin to you. Mm -hmm. Like you say, it's your child. Yeah, yeah. And you don't want to part with that. Mm -hmm. You don't have those feelings or the, that, those kind of emotions mm -hmm. often enough that you can just freely say, okay, you can, you can buy this from me. This right. Is, uh -huh. So how long does it take you to paint a painting? Um, it varies. Uh, it depends on size. Mm -hmm. It depends on outside influences. It depends on my work schedule as far as design. I try to stick to a strict method of at least two a month. Okay. That gives me two weeks to paint. And um, sometimes I go over that. Sometimes I go under that. Sometimes I only get one out of the month. So what do you paint with? What is your medium? Mostly oil at this point. Um, last month I tried to go back to uh, pencil mm -hmm. and I do have some acrylics mm -hmm. and I like acrylic but oil is just it's just that it's, <laughs> it's, it's so flexible mm -hmm. you can thin it to a wash akin to say a watercolor uh, or make it thick and texturize it you can just do so much with oil mm -hmm. the, and um, the colors it's proven that oil paintings will last we have oil mm -hmm. paintings that are you know over a thousand years old now do you seal it with something sometimes mm -hmm. I usually do um, and I, I uh, started getting into glazing as well okay. mm -hmm. to seal it with a glaze because it's uh, something that you want, it's a record of your time here. Yeah. And it's a record of what people were doing when you were here. So speaking of that, tell me how did you finally find your voice, your style? From experimentation more than anything else and from experience. A lot of the things that I do now I did not have the experience to do 20 years ago. A lot of the techniques that I was learning then and coming out of art school, uh, perfecting anatomy and uh, the, the, the elements of design, things of that nature, I had that, but I didn't have the experience to use it. So you say experience helps mm -hmm. you to find your voice. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You can... Knowledge, knowledge is knowing how to use a tool. Mm -hmm. Experience is knowing when to use it. And you don't need everything in your arsenal every time. There are some things that you can use to an extent that it, it is the simplicity of it will tell the message. Mm -hmm. And from that experimentation and experience, I think I found where I was most comfortable telling the story that I saw. Mm -hmm. so that's the only story I can tell. <laughs> <laughs> Does it change up sometimes, or pretty it stay consistent? constantly changes, but it's always a different approach around the same story. Right, right. 
when I try to go with a different story, uh, I'm flabbergasted. It's mm -hmm. like that's not me. <laughs> it's it, you know, it's 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 not, mm -hmm. and it becomes a waste of time and effort. So um, I can look at the story that I've been blessed to experience, and I can approach it from different angles. By angles, I mean with different colors or different models, mm -hmm. but it's the same story. Okay. And I think most artists tell the same story. So your technique, tell me about your technique. My technique is uh, basically built around the seven elements of design, which is line, direction, size, shape, color, texture, and hue. And I start out just like that. Mm -hmm. I see something and I see the line of it. Where is that line going? Is it jagged, straight? Is it curved? I, then I look at the direction of the line. Then I look at the sizes and the shapes that I will come to harmonize or help that line exist. Mm -hmm. Then I bring in my colors. Then I bring in the texture. Mm -hmm. And in doing that, um, at some point in time, the image itself will jump out. And I'll see that image now. I'll see, okay, you, you've done it. You, mm -hmm. you, you've supported it enough that now it is on its own and it has a life of its own. All I can do is enhance that life. Okay. And in a perfect world and a perfect day, sometimes it works. <laughs> okay. <laughs> oh, that's cool. So your strokes. I mean, I, I see, do you use a palette knife or brush? Or? Both. Both? Uh-huh. Mm -hmm. The knife, uh, sometimes I use for texture. Mm -hmm. uh, usually I'm using a brush. But uh, the palette knife, I, I will, I'm not afraid of it. it. I'll use that. So you said you're not afraid of using the palette knife? Not at all. Uh -huh. Okay. And when I have... Uh, a lot of space. Mm -hmm. I find it's very advantageous to use the knife instead of the brush. Now they, they tell me that I need to loosen up, open up, and and is that how is that when you pull your palette knife out to loop to loosen up to kind of free it up so it's not so stiff? Not really. Mm -hmm. Not really. Um, I've heard people say that you know that you need to loosen up. Mm -hmm. And I believe that loosen up is a matter of opinion. Mm -hmm. Because you could have been just as loose and as fluid as you were with a brush or a knife. Right. Uh, I think uh, it's an attitude. Sometimes you can get cramped in your own style and just get stuck yeah. in, in one portion of your yeah. creation. And you do need to loosen up or expand, I okay. think. Mm -hmm. But no, the knife... Um, the knife with me is uh, getting away from the flat color because it's harder to blend with it. And you'll notice sometimes I'll, I'll, I'll work in just one color mm -hmm. and then put another color next to it. And to break up that and keep it from being monotonous, mm -hmm. I'll use the knife and I'll go in there and slice and create I images see. with the knife. Because your blending is just awesome. It's, uh, thank you, it, uh, it starts with one color. Mm. If you put one color down and you put a ne another color next to that, mm -hmm. it's easier to blend. Okay. And then as it blends further, you can see how the light would affect it and then you get the third color. Or sometimes it's just monotone. Mm -hmm. okay. And let the eye, let the viewer's eye play with it. In many paintings, I have found it's what you didn't paint that made all the difference. That's true. It's like that, the note that's silent, mm -hmm. the music. Mm -hmm. The silence that lasted a thousand years. But it, it creates the whole uh -huh. sound it without the, the whole, silence. Uh -huh. Without silence, you wouldn't have sound. <laughs> <laughs> uh huh. So, do you use your imagination or do you paint live? Uh, both. Both. Uh huh. Mm -hmm. um, I will start out, usually, I'll start out live 
with. Do you paint live or do you paint with your imagination? Both. Mm -hmm. uh, usually I'll start out live and I'll use my imagination from a point of what if? You know, I've got a face. Mm -hmm. Now, what if that face was cut in half and the left half sank down and the right half went up uh -oh. and I put a square behind that. Were you drinking some wine, but <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, it's, you know, what if? So what if, Lloyd? What if? Um, <laughs> The what if in art could be anything. Um, you're free. You can do anything that you want to do. You can change colors. You can change directions. Uh, you can change subject matter. You can stop. Hmm. So, you know, it's what if you're working on a painting and you just stop. Mm -hmm. No one knows when it's done but That's you. True. Do you ever complete a painting? Do you ever say that's enough? You have well, to know. Done. You have to know when to say that's enough. Mm -hmm. You can overdo it. Mm -hmm. You can, um, and that's one of the greatest lessons, I believe, that a young artist can learn, is when to stop. Don't get carried away. When it becomes work, as opposed to play, that's something else. Then you should stop. Huh? You should stop. Yeah. Uh huh. When you've done enough, and enough is enough, mm -hmm. stop. And use that energy and material on a new creation. Mm -hmm. So tell me about it. your your paint your live paintings or just your paintings. How do you capture the mood, the personality of the painting? That I believe is uh, first and foremost done with the eyes. Mm -hmm. If it's a figure study, it's done with the eyes and next with the colors. Colors set in a certain emotion in everyone and I have found by putting different colors next to some other colors you can juxtapose emotions mm -hmm. and feelings through colors you can make uh, you can you can create depth you can create light mm -hmm. and uh, using that with the eyes I really love painting eyes I like painting faces I like painting um, people mm -hmm. I know you like that woman. Yes. <laughs> the female figure. <laughs> um, yes, I do like painting women. Mm -hmm. um, you never run out of subject matter when painting women. Mm -hmm. Women are so diverse, uh, especially in this civilization, our civilization, and they are allowed to expand on their diversity. And to capture that, you have an endless source or an endless source of subject matters. Mm. Very cool. But you like men too. I uh, noticed that your men, they have muscles, they have their strength, their power, they have six packs. Oh, yeah. Mm. The women, <laughs> the women that I paint, um, I visualize it as they made love to gods and gave birth to legends and those <laughs> are the men that I paint. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> very cool, very cool. Yeah, but um, the, the tones and the texture, they make the muscles pop. They make the muscles pop. Do you sketch at all? I do, but not in a traditional way with a pencil. Mm -hmm. um, I sketch with a brush. Okay, on uh, the canvas. Uh-huh. And um, I'll get a single color, mm -hmm. and I will sketch out the painting on the canvas with the brush, a, a small brush. And uh, that's part of my construction is starting with the line. It's just starting with that sketch. Mm -hmm. And usually, I would say 90%, 95% of the time, I can tell what I'm going to do from that sketch. I can visualize the colors that I'm going to use. And I can also visualize or recognize whether my idea is feasible or not. And if it's not, I can wipe it off right there. That's what I like about oil. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> if it's, if you know, it's like, yeah, that was a good idea. Mm -hmm. um, you only need one good idea. And you can elaborate on that a lot of times. Mm -hmm. So I have a lot of ideas 
in the mornings and the evenings, I, I, I come up with ideas. Some are for design, some are for business, some are for just the pure fine art ramification of the idea. And out of those ideas, if I can do five in a day, that's 25 ideas I've got this week. I only need one. Mm-hmm. That's it, huh? Mm-hmm. So, tell me, what does success mean to you? Success, to me, is the ramification or the progression of a worthy ideal that um, I want to be an artist and I want to do art for my business. I want to do it for a business, from a business point of view. And if I can do that, whether I'm making, it's not dependent upon money, but money is a valuable commodity and a part of it. Mm-hmm. But as long as I am in a mode of creating, displaying my work, and creating my work of a certain quality, that is recognized not only by my peers, but society in general, I feel that I'm successful. Very cool. Does um, having, being an artist and having a business as an artist, is there a conflict in between the two? Is it hard to try to sell your art and to also then get into that creative mood and try to paint and, you know? Um, Design is my passion. Mm -hmm. Art is my pleasure. And if I can't satisfy one, I'll indulge the other. Mm -hmm. It gives me a balance, a natural balance that um, allows me the pleasure to create leisurely without pressure. Because I know I'm not going to sell a painting every day. Mm -hmm. But I can market a print every day. Mm three or four times a day. Right. Uh-huh. And no work goes unrewarded. So I know at some point in time, at least by Friday, I'll have groceries. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. So what was one of your learning experiences as an artist? Um, as a pure artist, knowing when to stop. Mm. Uh-huh. Um, taking a piece too far and, and, and destroying it. Mm. From a business point of view, recognizing the fact that everybody's not going to like your work. Okay. Um, don't take it personal. Huh? Don't take it personal. Uh-huh. Walt Walker, a uh, California a local artist, uh, many years back, I had a show, I had a studio, and he was one of the artists that was in the show. And uh, Mr. Walker came up to me and said, Lord, I don't really like your work, but boy, do you do it good. (laughs) I was like, okay. (laughs) Okay, I'll accept that. I'll accept that. (laughs) Because he was more of a traditional painter. Uh But he said, I don't don't really like your work, but boy, do you do it good. (laughs) And it was a learning experience. Everybody's not going to like your work. That's true. But you just got to do the best you can with what you have. Yeah. And that work um, is unique of you. Mm-hmm. And when you look at, um, when I look at my family, and the people that I know, the average person, their great grandkids might know their names. That's mm-hmm. about as far as they're gonna get. Mm-hmm. A thousand years from now, I intend for people to be talking about a D-Berry painting. Mm-hmm. Minimal. That's, that's pretty deep. Mm-hmm. So it's not all about just, you know, getting paid and doing it right, right now. Right, I'm, I, I'm Leaving looking, a legacy. And a record of the time in which mm-hmm. I lived. Okay. To use the same tools that, in some cases, a caveman used to paint <laughs> on a wall uh-huh. thousands of years ago. Charcoal. Yeah, yeah. Uh-huh. And we're still using it. Okay. I just want to start it over. So, so how do you use your paintings to change people or to influence people? Uh, I don't 
really set out to change or influence them. I set out to reflect them. And, and in doing so, they get a better picture of themselves. Because as even change is the only certainty in life, I don't think you can change a person unless they are willing to change mm -hmm. or to accept change. So I paint certain things with certain emotions, certain subject matters that will meet people of like and they will recognize themselves in my paintings. Well said. So your platforms, the different platforms that we use, which is a gallery, which is festivals, like the Art in the Garden, mm -hmm. um, magazines, videos, which, which ones do you like the best, the most? Facebook. Uh, <laughs> Facebook. Uh -huh. um, Facebook is gratification. Mm -hmm. It's all about gratification. It's, it's nice when somebody likes your work on Facebook, mm -hmm. but most of the people on Facebook are not there to buy. Mm -hmm. They're there to socialize. So you uh -huh. can't make a living on Facebook. Mm -hmm. So you have to look at the live exhibition. Um, one day shows are good. Mm -hmm. um, I would say they are the bread and the butter of art in general. The studio and the gallery I have an affinity toward mm -hmm. because um, one, you get a better view of a person in their studio or in their gallery because that's their environment. Right. And you can also immerse yourself within yourself mm -hmm. when you're working in your studio. A lot of times I have walked away from a painting to look at another painting like, wait a minute, what did you do there? <laughs> Uh, you go and look at that and it's like, okay, that's what needs to happen. Because mm -hmm. so many times you're painting and, and, and it's spontaneous and, and you just get it mm -hmm. and you want to duplicate that. Well, in a studio environment or, or a gallery environment, you can do that. Mm -hmm. So uh, I think it's all depending upon the available funds and the temperament of the artist. Right. where he or she should place themselves, where they're going to be better. Mm -hmm. A good artist can probably do, that, do it all. So let's sum it up. I like to sum it up with a few words and you just explain what you think. Coltrane. Always there. Mm. Always there. Um, whether it was um, music, art, description, he was the ultimate. Mm. And um, it was a pleasure for me to paint Coltrane. Mm -hmm. I painted his horn, I painted him, and I painted them together. Because that, uh, to listen to Coltrane, and at the point in time in my life, it was uh, breaking away from the shackles of tradition. Mm. So it was freedom. Mm -hmm. How about poetry? Poetry, the word in itself um, could be the forerunner of the vision. Because if you speak the word with enough force, it will give you the vision. And a lot of times they play hand in hand on both because I can paint a painting and no one will understand it until I name it. Mm. And sometimes I write little sayings around paintings mm -hmm. to describe them. They call them the artist statement. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I see. What about love? Love, love that great illusion. <laughs> <laughs> Is it a dream? Is it a dream? Is it an illusion? Mm -hmm. um, as I've grown older, I have realized that love comes in so many forms. Mm -hmm. And it depends on where you are in your life, what you love and who you love and how you love. But being a uh, human, I think it is a necessary thing. You know, whether you love your work, whether you love your model, whether you love yourself, mm -hmm. love is just good and it's mm -hmm. good to love and you can't mm -hmm. you can't create out of hate mm -hmm. hate can motivate you mm -hmm. you will get up and run out of here and you know 
You're not going to do that. <laughs> but you cannot create out of hate. I can. Mm -hmm. But out of love, mm -hmm. I will create. Okay. And it, it motivates me to create. Mm -hmm. So when you paint, and I'll, I'll keep, keep this going because you say love. When you paint, do you, the music that you listen to, is it what? It's, what type uh, of music do you listen to? I listen to upbeat music, um, music with lyrics, mm -hmm. a lot of instrumentation, um, music that is live. Um, I don't listen to classical music when I paint. It's usually R, B, and jazz. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. Anyone in particular? Um, Stevie Wonder, all of Motown. Anybody from Motown I'll listen to. Um, I'll listen to Tupac. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I, I, I love Tupac. Um, a good, great, as you mentioned, a poet, a great poet. Uh -huh. um, and it depends on my mood and what I'm painting. But um, I like upbeat music when I work. If I'm working by music. Sometimes I don't work by music. Really? Mm -hmm. What is that, your mood? Mm -hmm. uh, it depends on if I'm drinking Jack Daniels. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> but, um, Do you wake up and look to see what you painted afterwards? <laughs> mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You know, the next morning it's like, oh, oh. <laughs> where were you? Uh -huh. but, oh, who was uh, in the room with you? Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, where is she? <laughs> <laughs> but uh, usually I listen to uh, music. Sometimes I watch TV when I paint. Really? Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And um, especially in the daytime, if I'm painting in the daytime, I usually have the news or a talk show on some background. Mm -hmm. uh, if it's uh, night and it's later night, it's music. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. And I finish my design work and um, I'm really fulfilling a need as much as I'm releasing. And I'll go for the brush, the grease paint, <laughs> and the music. Mm -hmm. You put your scrubs on. Huh? Yeah. <laughs> so last question, if you were to tell your younger you how to, to paint and to live now, what would you say? What would you tell the younger you? Don't do anything different. Ooh. You like, huh? Uh-huh. Um, it all it wasn't always good. Yeah. And it wasn't always lovely. Mm -hmm. It wasn't always pretty. But it was such a learning experience and God allowed me to survive it and to be here now and, and to look back on it. It's uh, I wouldn't I wouldn't change anything. Cool. I wouldn't change you know, it's like I would like to have more money. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm a capitalist. Mm -hmm. not hard. Yeah. <laughs> I, I would like to have more money, but I've had good things. I've had good times. I've known good people, mm -hmm. and um, I've done some great work. I feel that I've done some great work. When I look back on things that I did in the '80s and the '90s, it's like, wow. Yeah. Yeah, that was all yeah, right. Yeah. You know, yeah. and um, the last show we did with you in the Rose Garden. Mm -hmm. A lady came by and showed me a picture of her on her phone of a painting that she bought from me in 1981 Ooh. in Fox Hills Mall. Wow. And her friend was saying, and she just loves it. It hangs on her living room wall. And, wow. You know, and I looked at it, and I was so happy. Ah, uh, no, that made you feel good, it, huh? Uh -huh, because it still looked yeah, good. Yeah, it, 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 you know, it wasn't junk. Yeah. And, you know, being blessed to live that long, you know, that in, in today's society, that's, that could have been a lifetime yeah, for some people. That's true. That so, true. Um, no, I wouldn't change anything. Very cool. Very cool. So I want to take a second with you after this and go around to a couple of the paintings and t just tell me a little bit about okay. a few of them. But thank you so much for this Thank interview. you. Tell them how they can find you. You can find me at dberryart.com. Mm -hmm. That is the most expedient way. And uh, my email and my address is there. Mm -hmm.
How can we find you? At dberryart.com. And my email address and my phone number there is there. All my contact information is lo- along with a lot of samples. Mm-hmm. How about Facebook and Instagram? Lloyd DeBerry. No Instagram, but Lloyd DeBerry on Facebook. Okay. You're not on Instagram? No. I thought I tagged you. Maybe yeah, I am then. I think you are. Oh, really? <laughs> I think you are. <laughs> but yeah, well, thanks a lot. And this is um, Dysona Art Talk Magazine. You can find us on YouTube and uh, dot com and Facebook and Instagram and all that good stuff. It's been a pleasure. Yeah, we'll do it again okay. after a uh, few years. <laughs> See what happens. Okay, thank you, Lloyd. <laughs> Hi, Lloyd. How are you? I'm good. I just wanted you to tell us about the the lady here that you painted. This is the groupie. Um, The mythical young lady that follows the musicians. Mm -hmm. But um, I wanted to put her in a situation that she also could show her musical talents. Because in a lot of situations, we follow those that uh, we admire because of what they're doing and we're not doing. So it was um, something I wanted to do that was simple. It's um, not a lot of color, but it had a good feeling about it. It just felt good at the time. She's sexy too. She's sexy. She's a pretty child. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Let's see behind you. There's a man, he's got power. That is uh, Michael, is the name of that. Mm -hmm. And it's, representative of um, the Archangel Michael. Mm -hmm. Or it could be another Michael that was a boxer. It depends on the eye of the viewer. Great form. Thank you. Okay, Lord. That is uh, called Winter. Mm -hmm. And it's a girl. She is um, in a winter hood. But her gaze and her colors are warm. It reminded me of how some people can be in any kind of a situation or atmosphere, but their inner being is so warm that they warm the environment around them. Mm -hmm. I really worked on the glasses and the Mm -hmm. eyes. Uh, They are the focal point. And the shadows within her eyes give you the impression that that hood is around her head because there's something around that has a shadow there. But it was um, a pleasure to do that. It worked. And um, it was originally a model that I found on an old Essence magazine cover. cover. Mm Mm-hmm. Very nice. She's beautiful. So, winter. Yeah. Winter. <laughs> so you have to come out and uh, check his artwork out. Give him a call, set up an appointment, and come down and uh, meet with him. He's got a nice gallery here. And you can find him on his website. LouisDeBerry.com. Mm-hmm. Right. DeBerryArt.com. <laughs> TheBerryArt.com. Thank you all for being with us. And I think you're going to love this interview. My pleasure. <laughs> Thank you, Lloyd. <Lord. laughs>